This short video provides details on the Polymer Environmental Comparator, or PEC, as well as its use and outcomes. This is a web-based software developed through a collaboration between the USDA, Iowa State University, Embase, and NIPRO. This software package is designed to allow three possible users, resin producers, manufacturers, and end users, to quickly and easily compare the environmental impacts, namely greenhouse gas emissions, energy consumption, and costs of various bioplastics to petrochemical plastics. Thus, at any stage of a plastic product life, from resin product to manufacturing to end-of-life treatment, it is possible to determine how the various plastics will impact the environment. The models used in this software look at the direct impacts, such as the energy used to extract oil or natural gas, the average energy and emissions to transport the feedstock to a refinery, and the energy and emissions to convert the fossil carbon into a plastic with all of the costs related to each of these activities. In the case of bioplastics, we assume the average usage of fertilizers, growing requirements, harvesting impacts, and average transporting energy and environmental impacts, as well as related costs. In purchased versions of the software, it is possible to alter these assumptions to a particular production configuration. For example, reduce the travel distance of the feedstocks or adjust the mode of transportation from over the road to over the sea. The software is written so that you start in the upper left-hand corner and work your way down, populating each page with values that correspond to your application. For ease of use, there are built-in assumed values based on national averages that you can easily modify in most of the fields. The first item that must be indicated are which two materials you want to compare. In this example, we are comparing PE, polyethylene, to a soy protein plastic, SPI. It is possible to highlight any two combinations, including two bioplastics, such as PLA and PHA. Because this version of the software has limited number of plastics, the user can directly enter other materials along with their impact. When the materials are indicated, the default values for energy, emissions, and costs are used. These values are based on national averages and can be modified in the lower field. At this point, it is possible to compare the two materials' impact. For example, you can compare the costs, emissions, and energy required to acquire the raw materials and produce the plastic. Additional compounding can be considered, such as blending a filler, or in the case of SPI and zine, tailoring custom blends for commercial applications by selecting the Use Compounding. Once selected, the mixer size, extruder, and pelletizer and corresponding energy and costs are populated with default values. These values can be modified to match a particular setup as needed. It is important to note that if you select compounding as an addition process in your manufacturing process, there are standard default values for capital costs, overhead, maintenance costs, and power usage, as well as depreciation time, all of which can be modified to match your particular setup. Similar fields will appear throughout the software, all of which can be modified. As previously mentioned, the software has built-in assumed values for many of the energy and emissions values based on national averages. However, if these values do not match the values your model requires, you can modify them in the general settings. Note these values only affect the emissions for processing and compounding and do not affect the values for the materials. The next page that needs to be populated is the processing page. This version assumes injection molding of parts only. In addition, as with the previous pages, there are assumed values such as a small machine or large machine and part size as well as labor and overhead costs. It is important to note that the costs of the parts are primarily driven by the part weight. Because in the material page the total amount of material was defined, part weight determines the final number of parts to be manufactured. If this needs to be adjusted, you can go back to the materials page and adjust the material amount. In addition, you can modify the price and design of the mold tool. If recycling of rejected parts is an eco-friendly part of manufacturing practices, you can select a regrinding system and modify the size and cost associated with the grinder. It is important to note that it is assumed 100% of the rejects, 100% process yield, will be reground. 
In the upper right hand of the processing page, it is possible to see the costs, emissions, and energy to produce the parts for the two materials. This allows you to compare these impacts up to and including manufacturing. For example, at this point, these values correspond to the energy, costs, and emissions to acquire the raw materials, produce the plastic, and process the plastic into a product. The costs comparison page provides information of the costs to produce as a function of the number of parts produced. The last page that needs to be populated is the end product treatment. In this page, you need to determine what will happen to the product once it is no longer needed. Will it be sent to the landfill, and if so, will it decompose into methane gas? Or will the product be burnt for fuel? Or will some or all of the product be recycled? Because various pathways greatly affect the impact of the product, all of these values can be easily modified. It is important to note that at this stage, you can compare the total life cycle of the two materials from acquiring the raw materials, producing the plastic, processing the plastic into a product, to deposing of the products. Depending on which plastic is highlighted, you can change the fragmentation of the material. You can only change the recycling rate and incineration rate, and the calculator assumes that the balance is landfill. If you click on the More Information button on the left side, you are given details on how the energy balance and emissions are calculated. Below the landfill rate, there is a box for methane recovery. While it is not common, some landfills collect the methane produced during decomposing and use this as an energy source. If the landfill accepting discarded product in this scenario is eco-friendly and captures methane for energy, the calculator will estimate the positive energy credit and corresponding emissions. It is important to note that the calculator only allows for methane recovery for those plastics that are biodegradable. As in other pages, default values are assumed for various relationships. For example, what is the efficiency of the power plant if the plastic is burnt for energy, and how much emissions are generated? In addition, it is assumed that 30% of the energy and emissions are required to recycle plastic as compared to produce new virgin plastics. It is important to note that this number can be modified. All of these values, as well as the national average of landfill costs, can be modified to better match your situation. Finally, the balance page allows you to compare the entire LCA of the two plastics side by side for the entire production run, all parts, including costs, emissions, and energy used. It is seen that these values are tabulated into the various unit operations throughout the product's life, from material compounding to processing to end-of-life treatment. It is also seen that the last chart breaks these values into per-unit mass values.